Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ad Mail. This is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of IRA Financial. I'm here to help you find the answers to the most frequently asked questions from my clients about self-directed retirement accounts. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Real Estate IRA. Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. And today's ad mail, Real Estate IRA number two. Three more important questions on the topic of using a self-directed IRA to buy real estate. So this is um, episode two in probably a four or five part series, I haven't decided yet, where I'm going to be tackling questions on using an IRA to buy real estate. Just thought it would be more beneficial to group these questions together um, so we can all tackle these topics together and kind of stay on topic without having any disruptions from other important areas. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, first question is from Bill R. Bill wants to know, I want to set up a self-directed IRA to buy real estate and need to get the IRA funded very quick. Can I always set up an LLC down the road when I have more time? So it's a great question, Bill. And before we get into your question, let me just summarize the two main ways to buy real estate and IRAs, a regular old self-directed IRA or a self-directed IRA LLC, also known as checkbook IRA. The first one is simple. You fund the self-directed IRA from an existing retirement account, and then the IRA buys the real estate directly. Title in the real estate is in the name of the IRA, the benefit of the IRA owner. In that case, if you need to pay an expense or pay any type of bill, you have to get the custodian to issue the check or issue the wire to the recipient. With a checkbook control IRA LLC, same first step, the IRA is funded through a transfer rollover of an existing retirement account. But then instead of the IRA funding the real estate directly, there's a special purpose LLC that's put in the middle and stuck between the IRA and the ultimate real estate investment so that the IRA funds the LLC, which is special purpose, disregarded entity, basically a tax nothing, but does give limited liability protection. And then the LLC makes the investment in the real estate, giving the IRA owner checkbook control as the manager of the LLC, because that individual can just write a check to pay an expense versus having to go through the custodian. So sure, Bill, you can buy the real estate directly from the IRA. And then if you want to set up an LLC down the road, no problem. We'll set up a special purpose LLC, generally in the state, where the real estate will be located. And then we will literally quit claim and contribute the real estate tax-free to the LLC in exchange for the LLC units so that the IRA ultimately would own the LLC and the title would be quit claim from the IRA to the LLC. But we're just moving chairs around, right? Ultimately, the IRA is still going to own the real estate just indirectly through a disregarded entity, uh, the LLC. And I get it. The LLC setup can take a couple more days. We got to do the um, articles, the tax ID number, the operating agreement, depending on the state, it could take another couple of days. So if you aren't a genuine rush, then we can always do the checkbook control IRA LLC later. Or if you just aren't in a rush, but you don't know if you want the LLC, but down the road you want it, without a problem, we can make that transition. It's tax-free. Uh, we'll handle everything for you. So Bill, nothing uh, to worry about. Really good question. Second question of today's podcast from Wilford C. Wilford wants to know, I own real estate in my self directed IRA, which I set up with you several years ago. I am a bit short on money to do some repairs I need to do to sell the house. What are my options? Uh, so really, really important question. So don't use personal money. That's <laughs> whatever you do, Wilford. You don't want to commingle personal and retirement money in this deal. So you have a couple options. Number one, do you have any other retirement money you can roll in? Tax rate, right? Maybe you have a former employer, 401k, or another IRA out there. Maybe your spouse or someone you know is another IRA that, that could jointly contribute to, to the deal. Um, but obviously, it's much easier if you have existing retirement accounts that you can just roll in tax-free to fund the real estate deal. That is the easiest, number one. Number two, do you have family members, friends, anyone that doesn't want to lend you the money, but maybe just wants to co-invest in the deal, right? Maybe you say, okay, I need 20, 30 grand. I'll give you 
two percent in this deal going forward, but I need the money contributed at this value. And essentially, the quick will will add the second IRA to the title, or if it's an LLC, will add the IRA to that LLC. The LLC will still own the real estate. That's another way. Third contribution, like you can put away seven thousand if you're under fifty, eight thousand if you're over fifty. So that's always an option. Uh, you can do that. A spouse can do that. So if you're only short five, six grand, just make the IRA contribution. Um, if you're over 59 and a half and you have a 401k plan at work, you can roll those funds tax-free into an IRA. If you're under 59 and a half, you're generally not going to be able to touch your current employer 401k plan. But again, if you have a former employer 401k, that's always a really good option. Uh, you can always try to get a non-recourse loan from a bank, but that's obviously difficult and that's going to trigger what's called UBIT, unrelated business income tax, where a percentage of the net profits associated with that deal could be subject to the UBIT tax because they're using leverage. But all in all, do not use personal funds, Wilford. If you have existing retirement funds or you can make the IRA contribution to cover your shortfall, that is going to be your best option. Otherwise, doing a joint venture with, with friends, family, neighbors, uh, colleagues, um, would be better than doing a loan because a loan would trigger you a bit, whereas a direct investment uh, would not. But good question. Unfortunately, this kind of stuff happens. You're one of our clients, Wilfred, so I assume you use our annual compliance service. Call us, contact us, chat us, and we'll get you the answers. If you want to set up a call with one of our uh, talented tax professionals and do it because we're here to help. Third and final question of today's podcast from Tim W. Tim wants to know, I have the ability to potentially do a real estate deal where I'm putting down funds for an option to buy real estate and then flipping that contract. If I use the self a self-directed IRA, would all the gains be tax-free? So I assume on the flipping of that real estate option contract, yeah. We actually have a bunch of clients that do this. Um, maybe you put down, let's say, 20 grand for an option to uh, close a deal on real estate in 30, 60, 90 days, and then you try to find someone to buy that deal from you and, and flip it. Um, during COVID, people were making a bundle on this. It was hard to believe. Someone put down like 50K on an option to, to buy a, a multifamily apartment building and they flipped the contract and basically make a bundle of money by literally flipping a deal and, and having that lockup period of like 60, 90, 120 days. And that's what the option gives you, right? You may lose your money if you don't execute on the deal, but you're getting the uh, right to lock up that deal. And then what people have done is, let's say it's a $600,000 deal, they flip the deal um, and, and you know make a few hundred grand on the deal um, by literally flipping a contract. So yeah, it's basically um, a tax-free event if you're doing it in the IRA. Um, you know, one thing to be careful about, it, you, you want to put some value on that option. If you're paying 50 cents for it, maybe the IRS argues to sham. You know, if you're putting thousands of dollars down for the option, it's real risk, re real reward. I think you're going to be fine. Uh, but just be careful uh, on making sure you're, you're putting down real money. The option has to have a value. You can't have it for free. It should have some value. To, to show there's a, a bona fide economic transaction going on. But yeah, during COVID, this stuff happened a lot. I'm, I haven't heard of a lot of people doing this lately, but Tim, if you have a good opportunity where you can lock up a deal for a, for a small option price and then flip that option, that contract to buy the deal at that price um, and, and make the difference um, or, or sell that deal at a higher price and make the difference, go for it. You can do it in a self directed IRA, which is a smart way to do it. And because it's probably going to be a short-term capital gains if you did it with personal funds, because you're going to hold the asset less than 12 months, using the IRA is a very smart tax-optimized solution because you could shelter all the income and gains from tax. So you basically will turn ordinary income tax into zero tax because it would not be long-term capital gains because you'd hold that contract likely less than 12 months. So self-directed IRA would be a very tax-smart uh, play. So thank you, Tim. Thanks, Wilfred. Thank you, Bill. Really good questions on uh, real estate IRA number two. That, that was the topic of today's podcast. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have questions, keep them coming. Send them to info at IRA Financial. You can also hit us up on social media, obviously, our amazing YouTube channel, Instagram, Facebook, X, uh, LinkedIn. You, we're there. Find us. We want to help you. You don't have to be a client to even help us. You uh, will be anonymous. I just need your first name. I don't even need to use your name. Uh, if you don't want me to use your name, you say anonymous. Uh, but most importantly, we all need to learn from these questions. I learn a lot from them. I prepare for this podcast. It's probably one of my favorites. Um, there's sometimes I just kind of want to talk it over with some colleagues, and I do. 
because there are really good questions. And I promise you, if you have the question, there's probably a lot of people that have the same question. So don't be shy. Don't hesitate. We'd love to hear from you. That's it for today. Have an amazing um, rest of your day. And I hope to see everyone again next week. Thanks. Mm -hmm.